Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to starting a new series on faith. And today we're going to be talking about faith requires belief. And we need to believe. But before we do that, the worship team is going to lead us into worship. So open up your heart. Prepare your heart to receive what God has for you today. Sing with the worship team. Don't just be a spectator. Enter in before the Lord.
you're still the same. I believe every word that you said. I believe there are scars in the hands that your goodness is good without it. You're Yesterday, now, and always, always. Your mercy is mighty, age after age. All generations will bow down in praise. The Lord is faithful. Yesterday, now, and always, always. I believe you will come in the clouds. I believe. presence I know there is power power to save oh I oh, will tell of your wonders sing of your grace God of creation knows me by name the Lord is faithful yesterday now and always always your mercy is mighty age after age all generations bow down in praise. The Lord is faithful yesterday, now, and always. Always. For you are, you are, you are, you are, you always will be God. Yes, you are, you are, you are, you are, you always will be God. your grace the god of creation knows me by name the lord is faithful yesterday now and always always your mercy is mighty age after age all generations will bow down in praise the lord is faithful yesterday
Thank you, worship team. Today, as we talk about faith requires belief, we're going to be starting to look at Mark. You know, Christians are called to live a life of faith. And when we have faith in Jesus Christ, we are saying that we trust him. Is it hard to say, I trust him? That we're saying that, Lord, I belong to you. Is it hard to say, Lord, I'm yours? And that we may not know what lies ahead. It's like, God, sometimes you only show us what we can handle. We only see that. But we know he's there. We need to be that way, that we trust that he knows what lies ahead and that we can trust him. You know, as we start this journey through Mark's gospel, we see people responding in faith to Jesus and his works and his words. And this is what we do. We hear, we read, we follow Jesus. He amazes us in what we see in him and what he's doing. His love, his sacrifice, his mercy, his grace, his hope. We see all these things in the word. And as we follow Jesus, he amazes us as what we see. And as we see him, as we see his love for us, as we see his sacrifice, as he, we see his mercy, as we see these things unfold, the life of faith requires certain things of us. And today, we want to think about how faith requires belief. Do we really believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do we believe that he can make a difference in our life? That he can make a difference in everything that we do every day? See, what difference does it make in our everyday life to trust Jesus? Well, let's look at Mark here. Mark 5, 35 through 42. While he was still speaking, people came from the synagogue leader's house and said, your daughter is dead. Why bother the teacher anymore? When Jesus overheard what was said, he told the synagogue leader, Do not be afraid, only believe. He did not let anyone accompany him except Peter, James, and John, and James's brother. They came to the leader's house, and he saw the commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child's not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, but they put them out all outside. He took the child's father, mother, and those who were with him and entered the place where the child was. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Little girl, I say to you, get up. Immediately, the little girl got up and began to walk. She was 12 years old. At this, they were utterly astonished. You know, this story turns on, the, on a short statement that Jesus made. Do not be afraid, only believe. Now, if you were in that same situation, and Jesus said that to you, now we know what Jesus did. Could you believe for that? Our text tells us that the man's name was Jairus, a synagogue leader who was in a desperate situation. His daughter was dying. He asked Jesus to come and lay hands on her and so that she could get well and live. In fact, in 841 it says, He fell down at Jesus' feet and pleaded with him. Hmm. We need to believe when we feel helpless. You know, there's nothing as helpless as death. It seems so final. Yet Jesus was not intimidated by death at all. He encouraged Jairus to believe, even though others had given up. And they didn't want to bother Jesus any longer. She's gone. Give up. To them, Jesus was of no use against that enemy, death. 
They didn't know the power of Jesus the way that we do. Helplessness, weakness, feeling like giving up, all of these are addressed by our faith. Abraham and Sarah were old and unable to have children, yet the angel asked them if anything was too hard for the Lord. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? You know, when we give up on life, when we give up on marriage, when relationships, hopes, even that we might be saved, there's times that we, we give up. When we believe in Jesus, we are never helpless. We have the greatest helper that's ever walked the earth. Jarius was so desperate, yet he had faith. He believed. That's what faith requires. It, it requires us to believe. Is belief hard? Yeah. But there's also, we need to believe even when others have given up. You know, living in life of faith in the world of faithlessness can be challenging. Sometimes people who had faith have given up. Sometimes people will discourage our faith. Sometimes the difficulties of life discourage our faith. It's just so hard. Jesus walked through the house and the doubters that had laughed at him. He walked into the room with Jairus' daughter. We got to look at this. When we're afraid, he's not. When we don't know the future, he does. When we do not have the power, he's powerful. When we aren't sure, he's faithful. We believe because he can do it. You know, we are not people of faith because we have such great wisdom, because we have such strength, because we have such power, but we are because he does, because Jesus does. We believe because we know that Jesus can do what we need. There's nothing that's beyond his power. His resurrection proves that even death does not hold the ultimate keys of that power any longer. He conquered it. How often are we defeated because of what we cannot do. We must learn to place our concerns, our cares, our grievances in the hands of Jesus. You know, Jairus was a believer, a desperate man, who regarded Jesus as his last hope for his sick daughter. This is it. This is the only thing I know to do. Everything else we've tried hasn't worked. We believe because he's our last hope at times. You know, sandwiched in this story is an interruption. A woman who crawled to Jesus through the crowd. Let's look at it. In Mark 5, 25 through 34. Now a woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years had endured much under the doc, many doctors. She had spent everything that she had and was not helped at all. On the contrary, she became worse. Having heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his clothing. For she said, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be made well. Instantly, her flow of blood ceased, and she sensed it in her body that she was healed from her affliction. At once, Jesus realized in himself that power had gone out of him, and he turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see the crowds pressing against you, and yet you say, Who touched me? But he was looking around to see who had done this. The woman with fear and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him. And told him the whole truth. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be healed from your affliction. 
Can you imagine this woman's desperation? A 12-year blood flow that left her hopeless. I mean, doctor after doctor, she had been to all the appointments. She'd waited in the line. She'd spent all her money. Nothing to bring about a cure. Instead, she got worse. Then she heard that Jesus, and she was determined, if I could just touch his clothes, I'll be made well. She reached out and touched him and immediately felt the power of Jesus flowing through her. And Jesus told her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be healed from your affliction. Just like Jairus, she believed. Even though helpless, she believed. When others had given up, she believed because Jesus could do what no one else could do. See, our last hope many times is Jesus. When we've done all that we can do to repair the damage of our own sin, and it hadn't worked, that's when we turn to him. That's when we turn to Jesus. See, belief is a core value of Christianity. One cannot be a Christian without believing. You got to believe that Jesus died. When we want to give up, we should remember that we are here and God blesses us as we serve Him. When you feel hopeless or helpless, believe Him. When others have given up, believe Him. When in doubt, believe him, because he can. When you're feeling hopelessness, believe in him beyond all others. We're going to look at something that's a little bit parallel here. Jairus' daughter was 12 years old. The woman who suffered with an issue of blood was for 12 years. One seems a new health issue, one a long term. Whether you need God's help for a, a healing, for hope, for strength, for freedom, for finances, for relationships, whatever you need, the most from God today, He can do it. Don't lose faith when the battle takes a long time. When it seems like it's, it's too late, trust in the one who can bring peace to your faith. He can bring assurance that he's going to work. Trust in the one who can, as you place your faith and assurance in him, that he can do it. See, faith requires belief. We got to believe. We got to believe. Do you believe that God can change your life? Do you believe that God can bring healing when, when the doctors say there, there's no hope? See, when we open up to God, God can do a lot of things. We've got to believe in Him. You know, I don't know what you're going through, but God does. And God wants to bring healing to the areas of your life that need it. So open up yourself today. And tell him, Lord, I believe you can do what I need. Lord, I believe what, that you can do what I need. Whether it's salvation, whether it's healing, whether it's a cure from an addiction. Lord, I believe you can do what I need today. Lord, I thank you for doing that. I thank you for restoring us all. Lord, we believe. Lord, even your word says, help my unbelief. If you're facing unbelief, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, you know what I need. Lord, I just believe for you to do some great things in people. Lord, we thank you for the things you do every day. Lord, it's in your name that we pray and believe. Amen. We'd love for you to be a part here. Come. 
visit us and live in person. You know, I heard somebody say, well, your, your Facebook service is good, but you know what? It's not like your live service. Well, there's got to be some incentive to come live here live. So I would love for you to come and share with us here at 2360 Hardy Road. We would love for you to be a part on Sundays at 10 a.m. If you'd like to give, you can go to our website. There are ways to give there. Do that. We look forward to seeing you soon. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.